Hello, welcome to Mental Health Matters. My name is Barbara Myers and I am the host of the show. Today, the subject of our show is recovery, specifically recovery from mental illness. And I have two guests that are going to be exploring this topic with me. I'd like to introduce Katera Aslami. She's the Executive Director of PEERS, which is an organization that helps people recover from mental illness. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Katera. Thank you very much. And then I'd like to also introduce our second guest, Brian Jewell, who is a consumer who's in recovery and has participated in some of the programs in Katera's organization. The subject of recovery is a very important one, obviously, to people that have mental illness because they want to be able to live their lives as full as they can and, and be as self-sufficient as they can. And one thing I think is important to, to do when we're um, talking about recovery is that we talk about recovery of the whole person, a holistic person. There is um, a model that uh, shows the dimensions to recovery that was formed by a researcher named Howard Kleindell, and uh, he, what he called actually seven dimensions of life. And these are one's mind, one's body, one, the relationship that you have with people, things in your environment, spiritual aspects to your life, what you do for work, and what you do for play. These are all important parts of how you live your life. And when, when you're in recovery, it's important to realize that all of these things have to be paid attention to. I know that sometimes when I'm working with someone um, that, that's having difficulties, I will visualize this picture in my mind and try to think, now what's missing? Does the person have friends? Does the person have something uh, meaningful to do as a work? Does the person have something that they can do to have fun? Um, and all of those things make up one's life. So that's what we're really talking about recovery, is getting a handle on the totality of what's happening. What I'd like to do is, is let Katera talk about her organization and some about the RAP plan and its history and so forth. So, Katera. PEERS stands for Peers Envisioning and Engaging in Recovery Services. And we've been um, in business since 2001, and we're a nonprofit, consumer-run organization um, for Alameda County. We, our main focus is providing a wellness recovery action plan groups for the community throughout throughout the county. Um, Here's a mission: is really promoting wellness and recovery, and we believe that recovery is possible for all. Um, mental health issues, I feel like, is something that uh, everybody goes through. You know, we all experience difficulties mm -hmm. and we all have ups and downs in our lives. And um, I've, after, you know, going through the rock plan myself, I've been uh, exposed to it for over five years. And um, I feel like it's, uh, it, it's, it's usable for everybody. It's mm -hmm. not just mental health issues. Um, the RAP plan is unique because anybody that wants to bring wellness into their lives, mm -hmm. it, it allows that and it's, um, it's so personalized that depending on your culture or, or any, your age, you can, you can customize it, your own experiences. So it's, it's so unique. So for example, for my own self, um, uh, being an Afghan American and, um, family is like really emphasized in our culture and so when I developed my rap plan it had to include my family in it and they mm -hmm. had to understand it and understand what I was going through so it was really um, a great experience to go through um, very you know I think peers as an organization is very vital uh, to our community because it promotes the rap plan and it's so essential in, in wellness in everyday life um, we have weekly wrap groups, and we'll be talking about it later on when the dates are, the times and the places. Mm -hmm. We also have monthly wrap um, orientations, and um, peers 
is unique because all the RAP facilitators are certified through the Copeland Center. So we have people that have gone through the certification by Mary Ellen Copeland's um, organization. And uh, part of recovery, one of the, before you get into anything, is really understanding the five key concepts of recovery, which is hope, personal responsibility, education, self-advocacy, and support. Just to touch a little bit on each one of those, hope is just believing that things can get better and that they will. Personal responsibility is taking action for what has been going on, what changes you'd like to make in your life. Education is learning, finding out what works, what helps you. Education, reading the RAP plan was one of the you know, best education right. experiences for me. And then we also have self-advocacy. Once you educate yourself and find out what works, advocating for yourself, telling people what are the things that help you get closer to your wellness and letting them know in an effective way that so you're communicating with them in a way where they can understand what you're going through but also what you need out of your own recovery. And then mm -hmm. there's support. It's so critical in, in our lives to have some form of support, so whether it's from family, friends, organizations, support groups. To get through and bring wellness and get through our recovery, a lot of support is needed. Want to feel loved and want to give back to the community also. So to give love and to feel, you know, mm -hmm. love. The RAP plan that we'll be discussing has components in it, and the first component, before you really start your RAP plan, you, you really are encouraged to develop a wellness toolbox. So those are uh, a list of things that help you stay well. So, for mm -hmm. example, mine would be um, exercising really helps, to, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm stressed, I need to exercise a little bit. Right, or, that works for me too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, what it works for you, Brian? <laughs> Well, I don't exercise like I should, <laughs> but um, sushi is pretty much at the top of my list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, those are, you know, it's unique to each individual, and so yeah. that's what makes it so effective. Um, I also like uh, sometimes um, practicing mindfulness and, mm -hmm. and just being in the moment. That mm -hmm. really helps me relax mm -hmm. when I'm stressed, too. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the daily maintenance plan, and that's, what you are like when you're well. So you want, when you're developing a rap plan, you want to be able to look back and say, this is what I'm like when I'm well, so that even in times when things aren't going so well, you can look back on that um, plan and see that this is, you know, there's hope, that this is right. something that you will get through. And then um, part of the daily maintenance plan is, uh, what do you do every day? What do you need to do every day? And what are things that you need to do once in a while, you know, every other day? But mm -hmm. that's part of your wellness. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for me, getting out of bed. I have to get out of bed every yeah. day. If I don't, then there's something wrong, you know. That's a key right. point. And you want to keep it real simple because if, you, if it's too long, it can feel overwhelming. You, this plan really, um, to simplify it and keep it so that it's usable, mm -hmm. and that's a key thing. Um, then there's the triggers, and those are external things that happen in the environment or between someone, you and another person that sometimes you don't have control over, but um, it affects you. It's something that you don't have control over. And so um, that's what would like, trigger a down spell or something, trigger something that if it happens too much can lead into early warning signs or when things are breaking down. So triggers mm -hmm. can be, you know, a fight with a, a, a loved one, mm -hmm. an argument. And mm -hmm. if you don't get that, you know, uh, the action plan would be, you know, probably cooling off and then mm -hmm. going back and trying to talk mm -hmm. and resolve the issue. But if that trigger uh, lasted for a long time, maybe feelings of, you know, anxiety or, or depression may come up for mm -hmm. if that relationship was lost through that, you know, interaction. And then we kind of led into early warning signs where to our internal um, things that happen to you. Those are things like, um, uh, for example, when you can't sleep, um, 
because something has happened, something has triggered you, and now mm-hmm. you can't sleep, and that's like an early warning sign in the action plan. What do you need to do to help with that? So for, for me, specific, you, know, you want to be really specific. Right. For me, it would be um, not sleeping for a, a, a day, a night. Mm-hmm. And some people, it may be, you know, not sleeping for two, um, yeah. three days. You know, that would, for me, be um, when things are breaking down, which is the next one. And that's when, you know, you went through your early warning signs, and now things are getting, you're feeling a little bit worse. But things are getting a little bit worse also mm-hmm. for you. And um, the rap plan encourages people to, you know, write down what that looks like and what are some things that maybe if you go through those, you know, you can do to help you get back mm-hmm. to, you know, maybe reducing the signs um, that are distressing or uncomfortable mm-hmm. or eliminating, hopefully, them. And then, you know, in life, things things happen, and, and sometimes we have no control over it, and we get into crisis, you mm-hmm. know. There are definitely situations where crisis um, may come up, and having the plan um, prepared, and really, a crisis, you develop it um, for your supporters, and so that's why it's really key to have some supporters there for you to share this plan with. Mm-hmm. Um, because you want to have, still have a voice, still have some control over how you're going to receive treatment. And in the RAP plan, it's so detailed. It goes into, like, so many steps that, like, you will, if you share with others, you, sometimes when you feel like you don't have control, the RAP plan gives you that control. Mm-hmm. It, you, you, sh- you develop it when you're doing well so that you can evaluate what you really want um, in your crisis plan mm-hmm. and um, and so when when you share it and you end up if someone ends up in a crisis and they give it to their supporter that hopefully those supporters will respect the, the rap plan and follow what's an example of something that might be in a crisis plan is it hospitalization or something like that yeah you know there's certain like if you if you need to take medication when you're mm-hmm. in crisis, what kind of medication you prefer, what mm-hmm. medication you don't want, mm-hmm. you know, where you want to go. If you need to go to a hospital, where you would go, okay. um, where you don't want to go also. There's right. who you want as part of your supporters and right. who you don't want. As part, I mean, it's so, it, you want to specify it because sometimes, you know, we talk about families are supporters, but sometimes, you know, they can also be triggers, and certain mm-hmm. family members aren't, you know, or certain mm-hmm. supporters aren't as, um, don't fit in each category. They have to have a specific mm-hmm. um, duty, and you also don't want to throw all of it on one person because then they will probably be overwhelmed. Um, so the crisis plan is, allows you to, you know, if you have the luxury of, um, there's respite centers also. We, I don't know if we have any in Alameda County, but um, mm-hmm. it's really something that you could develop with your own family if you, if you have a close family like that, where you don't have to go to a hospital, but you go to a place where it's comfortable, it's where you want to be, and you just get to go through your mm-hmm. um, what you're going, your um, signs and symptoms. Something that's been added recently is the post-crisis plan, and that's when you've done, completed, and gone through your, mm-hmm. you know, crisis, and you're feeling better, and you're getting better. Um, you may still need some support, and you may still need that little help here and there. And so it's really important to to have the post-crisis plan in in, in effect also, because you don't want the whole support network to stop just because the crisis has right. stopped. There's right. still um, a need for people to be there for you. And okay. So those are. Um, so it looks like it allows the person to have a lot of um, detailed planning and control over when they're not in control. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Brian, I understand that you have uh, been working with RAP Plan and right. in participated in some of this. I'd like to understand a little bit about your experience. Well, I've been involved with the RAP group for six months, mm-hmm. and it's, it's helped me to look at myself mm-hmm. and, for one, not to 
be blaming other people. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing for me. You know, it's all your fault. You did this to me. Mm-hmm. Now I take responsibility for myself. Mm-hmm. And I've just been uh, enlightened. Uh, each week we we work on something, and uh, you know, right now it's a, it's a small group, mm-hmm. but that gives us a chance to be more personal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the people that I'm there with are very good. So tell us a little bit about your story, Brian. Okay. Uh, my family has had mental illness for quite a few generations, mm-hmm. and so I just grew up with it, thinking, you know, I would live and die, uh, not ever getting any help. Mm-hmm. And I have found some good doctors here in Fremont at Price City Mental Health, mm-hmm. and they, after going through treatment and therapy with them for eight years, I get, that's how I learned about the RAP plan, and going through that, uh, I my recovery is, is better every day, okay. you know, yeah. and uh, help, you know, I, I can see, you know, hope in my future mm-hmm. where I didn't have that before. Okay. Just going through the RAP plan itself helped, helped to give you hope for your future. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things. Uh, I go to a good church. You mm-hmm. know, I have uh, um, good friends there. I have a wonderful wife mm-hmm. uh, and my, my doctors. And taking the right medication has helped a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I see a future for myself in, instead of just passing time. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I want to ask, both of you, you talked a little bit about hope and how participating in the RAP plan gives you hope. Can you tell us some other aspects of uh, getting hope? Um, for me, it was a, a little different. I, 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 when I was going through my depression, my periods of depression and anxiety, um, I, I lost a lot of that. And, and what happened is I had to, I got into crisis and I hit, you know, what I was with the, the bottom mm-hmm. and that made me realize that this is not the way I need to be living this is not what you know I, I've never lived you know I've never experienced these things before and I know I can you know I know I can get better and, and so you know and after going through it once and then experiencing it again you you, you figure out ways to bring back hope in and mm-hmm. Um, the first time was, you know, it was a crisis that was the eye awakening and mm-hmm. that I knew that I, you know, could get better. And, you know, I also was um, working then and I worked in a mental health uh, facility and um, I knew about the RAP plan and, and a lot of it, you know, knowing that Mary Ellen Copeland developed this plan through a lot of research of people that have experienced the same things that I have, mm-hmm. we have, that we have, gave me hope like people can recover and do get better and mm-hmm. just reading more about their stories and their what they experienced and how they recovered and how they brought wellness and back into their life really gave me more motivation to reevaluate what was going on with me. Is there anything more that you want to say about Yeah. Um the uh, I'm bipolar mm-hmm. and something else, uh, intermittent explosive disorder. Mm-hmm. So my my lows and my depression are really deep, but my highs are uh, um, dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I rageaholic might be a, a good word for it. Mm-hmm. And I just was always like that, always on the verge of uh, suicide. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, and I never saw any hope. I didn't, I didn't have any. And between um, going to church, having good doctors, and working on my rap plan, you know, I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, uh, it's a great thing. Good. You know. Okay. Uh, and so I, I know that there's help for me just getting on the freeway and not freaking out, mm-hmm. that shows me hope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's little things like that. Good. Can you give us some examples of things in your toolbox? Well, I already mentioned sushi. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Food in general makes me feel good. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
sitting in a redwood grove mm -hmm. is a big thing, nature, mm -hmm. um, music, mm -hmm. uh, praying and meditating, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot there. Yeah. Being able to call on a couple of good friends mm -hmm. and uh, my doctors are always there for me, my therapist. Good. Yeah. So I have a good support system. That's and, good. Uh, Sounds like it. It's, I wish I would have learned about this a long time ago. Yeah. 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 How about you, Katara? What are some things in your toolbox? Um, I always add new things. <laughs> um, uh, I would say the one thing that I really connect to is um, trying to find things to help meditate, like meditating, um, music. I sometimes, you mm -hmm. know, find myself laughing at <laughs> some <laughs> song in my car and just, you know, <laughs> just enjoying it. Um, and I like watching comedies. I like mm -hmm. laughing mm -hmm. right. and and being around um, positive people that mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I've heard there's such a thing as laugh therapy. There is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It really. And it, I feel like it works because it you know you just brings a little more joy into mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. my day if I can laugh a little bit at something and mm -hmm. um, forget about whatever's stressing me. Um, Another thing that I, I, you know, taking baths and, mm -hmm. and like, hot, you know, nice soothing baths, like, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's nice. And I also like to pamper myself <laughs> if I can. Mm -hmm. You know, just girly things like, you know, paint my nails or something. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was a part of my wellness toolbox. I love sushi also. Mm -hmm. um, Trying to find nature is probably one of the ones at the top also because yeah. um, I can practice, you know, some mindfulness techniques and deep breathing stuff mm -hmm. um, in nature and just reconnect yeah. to the earth. Yeah, it has a way of just um, getting rid of all of the stuff that we have around us all the time and just being centered. Now, I guess I'd like to ask you, how has recovery changed your life? That's an easier one for me mm -hmm. because I do have hope. I do see a future, and um, mm -hmm. I think that future is going to be working within the mental health system oh, really? here in Alameda County. Oh, good. Um, I've been doing a lot of volunteer work lately mm -hmm. since I uh, yeah. started doing my rap plan. Yes, good. and there's there's so many things that I feel uh, I can contribute to now that now that I've come out of uh, the, the deeper parts mm -hmm. of, of uh, my illness, mm -hmm. it's time to give back. Mm -hmm. And one of my things that I would really like to do is working with veterans. Mm -hmm. I'm a veteran myself, uh, even though I didn't see uh, any combat. Uh, there's so many people coming back that aren't going to get all the help that they need. And the, the mm -hmm. uh, VA hospitals are so full. Uh, that the county can help, and uh, they they do have a uh, uh, rap group for veterans, mm -hmm. and maybe when I take that training, mm -hmm. I can start working on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. I think there's a, something about um, helping other people that have been through the same thing that you have mm -hmm. that it's a very healing thing for you as well. Right. You know, it works both ways. And would you like to say how recovery has changed your life? Sure. I think you have this this career now, I guess. Yeah, yeah I definitely. Th this career is very um, fulfilling. It's mm -hmm. personal. I, I have a passion for it. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy just working with people and, you know, helping them, you know, develop, you know, see the rap plan and, mm -hmm. and see if it fits for them or not. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully it does because yeah. it, it, you know, the my recovery journey um, has brought more wellness into my life. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, for a while when I wasn't connected to it, I, I wasn't, I didn't live, I guess you'd say, a fully well life. And mm -hmm. now I get to see it and, mm -hmm. and bring that in more. Um, and um, so I, I have a lot of great. passion being here. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Now I'd like to talk to 
those of you who are, who are in the viewing audience, and I'd like to give you a challenge. The challenge is that sometime in the next few days, I'd like you to just do one fun thing for yourself that makes you happy and that gives you joy and take that and remember it and put it in your own toolbox as something that's going to be something that you can take out and use again if you need to to give you joy. So that's your assignment Mm -hmm. for the next few days. I'd like to tell you where Piers is and when the rap groups meet. The location of Piers is at 1825 San Pablo Avenue, Suite 201 in Oakland. Their phone number is 510-832-7337. They run weekly rap groups as we've been talking about in Alameda County. And the dates and location and the times of those are on your screen. On Tuesday, it meets at the Pierce office uh, from 11 to 1 p.m. On Wednesdays, there are two meetings. The first is at 333 Hagenberger Road from 10 to noon. And in the afternoon, there's one at Pierce office from 1.30 to 3.30. On Fridays, there's a meeting in Fremont at 39155 Liberty Street in Fremont from 10 to 12, and then another at Hagenberger Row in the afternoon. And if you'd like any more information about them when they meet or anything that you'd like to know, you can call the Peers telephone number 832-7337. I'd like to thank the guests here for being with us thank you, Barbara. today and for sharing with us their um, very hopeful journeys to recovery using RAP plans. I'd like to thank you for being with us today in exploring recovery. And I'd like to tell you to remember to take courage, friends. The way is often hard. The path is never clear and the stakes are very high. Take courage. For deep down, there's another truth. You are not alone. <laughs>